Hi, this is Bronwyn the Brave, and I'm showing how to add an I-cord to your cast-on edge to match nicely with your I-cord bind-off. Be sure to check out my video on how to do your bind-off. Here I have my swatch where I have knit a few inches after casting on, and then here's my I-cord bind-off. Doesn't that look nice? And so now I'm ready to flip this around. I have the cast-on edge facing up, and of course right sides facing me and I'm starting in the the area near the cast top but not exactly where that cast on is just because there's a lot going on there but I still want to keep it in that that cast on area just because if you consider um, if this were a cowl you'd want that seam to be in the back you know on the back of your neck where it might be more hidden and if there's any kind of a stitch pattern where there's a little bit of a jog you want that to stay in the back as well. For the I-cord on the cast-on edge, we'll actually be working with two double-pointed needles this time, and we begin with a slip knot, and I'll place that on one needle, and then we'll cast on two more. And I'm just going to use a knitted cast-on because it's it's only three stitches and it's easy. So there are my three stitches. And I'm going to, I won't turn, but I will knit those first two stitches. And then slip the third with the yarn in back. And I slip that purl wise. Now, I find somewhere near, near but not at exactly that cast on edge, or the cast on um, point. So now, I'm just gonna find, I'll start here. So I have my needle into that stitch, and I yarn over and pull up the stitch. So now, keeping this spare needle handy is probably the fiddliest bit. So this third stitch here, those, these two stitches were knitted, this third stitch was slipped. We're gonna slip, we're gonna pass that slip stitch over the stitch that we picked up. And then it's off the needle. And now we slide these stitches to the end. do that all over again. But we're going to change it just a tiny bit. So that's just to get started. So we knit two. We slip. But now we're going to yarn over before picking up the next stitch. And what that does is it gives just a tiny bit more yarn in that I-cord. Gives it a little bit of more of a plump, round round shape to it, I guess, and it's just a little bit, uh, a little bit cleaner, I guess. So we're going to slip that yarn over and the slipped stitch over that picked up stitch. So there we have that. Let me slide those back. Do that a few more times for you. So we knit two, slip purlwise with the yarn in back, and then, oh, don't forget, we'll yarn over, and then we pick up a stitch, and I'm just hanging on to that, the spare needle in my left hand. It doesn't do a whole lot. For quite a bit of this. There we go. And over. And slide them back over. Knit two. Slip one. 
yarn over, pick up the next stitch, and through. And you can either hold it, hold the needle in your hand like this and pick it up, or if it if it's easier, bring it over with your fingernails. That works just as well. So whatever works, whatever it gets it done more easily. One more time this way. Slip one, yarn over, and then I'm just going into that stitch. Get some more yarn here. Go into that stitch and pull it through. And so now I have five stitches on my needle, but we want to make it three. And just like with an I-cord bind off or any kind of I-cord, you could make this three stitches, four stitches, five stitches. So you can see it's starting to form. It's already looking nice and round. Of course, you can do this English style as well. So we still have the yarn coming from the, the third stitch here. And bear with me because this is not how I normally do it. So I'm terribly awkward. But we knit these first two stitches. Slip the third. And the yarn is already in the back, so we don't have to do much with it there. But then we do yarn over. And pick up this stitch. So the yarn is actually in front right now. And then in order to pick up that stitch, we bring it to the back. So here are those five stitches, and we can use our needle to pass both the yarn over and the slip stitch over that picked up stitch. You can do them either, uh, either the two together or individually, however you can manage to grab those. So there are those three slide those to the end of the needle and do that all over again. Knit two. Slip one. Oh, forgot my yarn over. Here's my yarn over. Pick up that stitch. these, see I'm just going to do them individually, pass the yarn over, pass the slipped stitch, and there you have it. So I will go ahead and finish my I-cord until I have all of these stitches of the cast on picked up and I meet the other end, which is all the way over here, So, and then I will show you how to graph the two ends together. As I was knitting around, I thought I would show you the difference between adding the yarn over before picking up that stitch and not adding the yarn over and that's what the this difference is you can see that blue peeking through so it's not quite as neat and clean and this this is where I've added that yarn over and it's just plumper and just rounder and you also don't see that blue. If it's all in one color, you're not gonna see that. It's just gonna kind of blend right in, but I still really like the plumpness of that. So I just wanted to show that. And I think most videos don't include the yarn over, so it looks like that. But if you are using two colors, I would definitely wanna use the yarn over. I have worked all the way around my cast on edge and used up every stitch of that cast on. You can see here that the next stitch would have been the, the first stitch that I had made. So now I have three live stitches and the beginning of my I-cord. Now the yarn is coming from the back of the third stitch. We want it to be in this first stitch here. So we're going to go in purl-wise and take that one off and pull it through. 
And I just slide my needle out so I don't lose those other two stitches. And then we go up to the top where we cast on and I like to roll it around and just find the first row that looks kind of normal with those with really good V's that make it really obvious where to go. So I would just go into this first V. You can see this V down below is not really a V. I don't like that one. So I go in here and pull that through. Now I come back down into the that first live stitch straight down where that yarn is coming out of and then into the next stitch I go into that one purl wise and take that one off so now I have two legs on that V you can see right here these two legs right here that's my new stitch and now we come back up to the top pull that one out just a little bit and we find another V. So right here is where my new stitch is. And I go to the next good looking V. Right here, because the one below that doesn't look like a V. And those, those messy cast on stitches will actually just kind of be hidden inside the end of that I cord. So you can see already that it's disappearing just a little bit. And now I go back down into that same hole, that same loop right here. Just trace the path if you get lost. And then purlwise into this last stitch. I'm getting it caught just a tiny bit. And then we take that needle out and we're done with that. So now we have one last stitch to pick up. And I'm going back up to the next good looking V. See these are a little bit fishy. I'm gonna go all the way up to here. And it's still in line with that other that last stitch that I picked. So I tug on that just a tiny bit and I go back down into that stitch. And I'm gonna go all the way down and kind of around that last bit you can see so instead of going straight down here I'm gonna go around that little bit of a knot of the cast on so I'm gonna pull that through so I can have a little bit more wiggle room and then back down to the back it's pretty seamless right there so here's my cast on tail I'll tuck that in in just a minute and I just take a few stitches because my theory is that the yarn can't go in three directions at once. So by going at least three times, you zig, zag, and then zig again, and then a couple more zigzags for good measure. So now, go through this last one. So now I can go in. There's this little tiny tube that all those stitches created. You want to make sure that you're not coming out the front, but you can just kind of wiggle it across. It's hard to show on camera, of course, but I can feel that it's in this little tube. It's kind of cool. So now the magic is that, pull that off. When I tug on it, it's like a drawstring and I'll snip this tail and then it hides away inside. You can't see that. So I will finish my other two ends for my cast on and my original cast on. And there I'm done. So there, this is my cast on edge and this is my I cord bind off. So if you haven't watched the bind off video, be sure to check that out and subscribe to my YouTube channel and my newsletter. You can do that on bronwynthebravedesigns.com and I'll catch you next time. Thanks.